Wizard is a card game that has been quite popular in the last years. It is a trick-taking game, so that is something that, you know, gives you some legs. It's easy to get people to play when you tell them that it's a trick-taking game, they know their general idea. But this is a game that puts an interesting spin on trick-taking, because it is a game in which it can be good to lose from time to time. Which means if you have a very bad hand that will get you to lose, it may still be good if you know how to, how to lose well. And we'll talk about that in case you don't know the game or explain how that works. The game is this in several versions. You have the original wizard that can be played between three to six players. Now we have a new version of variant, the two player version, which is quite different. In fact, it's not just the same game with a smaller deck. And then we also have an app version. I'm gonna show it to you on my, on my phone later. But let's start with the original wizard in case you do not know this game. This is the standard edition. There is also a deluxe edition, which is the same game, but has these trackers here, which you can lose to mark to mark the bid. And we'll talk about, about that. Oh, I decided to bid four. And so I marked that so I don't forget. You will still need a piece of paper to record stuff. This is a game that has a little bit of bookkeeping, which is, I wouldn't say it's a negative, just something you have to take into account. Rules are very short. Uh, these are pretty much the entire rules. So, so the sheet here is the same rules in many languages. You have a wizard score sheet. We don't use it. We simply use a piece of paper and mark things there. And here you will have the deck. It is almost identical to a traditional plain deck, but for the fact that you have two new symbols, the wizards and the jesters. The wizards are very good, they always win, the jesters are very bad, they always lose. But again, losing is not necessarily bad in this game. You shuffle, shuffle, shuffle the, the cards, then you give each player a hand of cards. That hand changes. The first round, each player only gets a hand of one, and then a card is flipped face up to indicate what the trump will be. Then the next round, the, the deck in, is reshuffled entirely, and each player gets a hand of two, and then again we determine the trump for that round. If there's a jester, there's no trump. Uh, if there's a wizard, then the dealer decides what uh, suit uh, is going to be trump. In this case, we have hearts. The next round, uh, we're going to have hands of three cards. I think you you know, you, you get where we're going. Um, where we're going from here. The game allegedly, technically, is supposed to continue until you have a hand in which all cards are dealt. That means that there are 60 cards so with three players. That means you play 20 rounds and the last round there is no trump because all cards are assigned. It may take quite a while for that. It's much better. I think this is how most players play it. If you decide in advance to play a certain number of hands, say 10, or there's a certain number of points and the first player to get the, the number of points that you have decided that beforehand, the first player to get there wins the game. So we are going to have a number of cards in our hand, depending on the round that we're playing. There's going to be a trump there. And each player looks at their cards and then each player places a bid. They bid on how many tricks they think they will win. If my hand is very good, I'm going to bid high. If my hand is pretty bad, I'm going to lose. I'm going to I'm going to bid low. And you score points if you get that exactly. That means if I say zero and I lose all tricks, so I, I won zero uh, tricks, I get to score. If you don't make your bid, so if you bid a certain number and then the actual number of tricks that, that you get to take was higher or lower, you lose points. Very tricky. That's why, again, a terrible hand that ensures that you'll get a zero uh, can be a good thing. So people commit to the number of tricks that they are gonna, that they think they're gonna, they're gonna bid. The range also changes because at the beginning each player has only one card the first round, so you can bid zero one. The second round each player has two cards, so you can bid zero one or two. So it gets much more challenging, much more complicated, and, it's, and I like that that the, the complexity, the, the tension, the challenge grows as as you warm up 
during the game itself. So the dealer will get to play a card and that is the leading suit for that trick and other players have to follow suit. Unless they do not have any card of that suit, then they can play a trump. They can always play a jester or a wizard. And then after players have, have played their cards, suppose that uh, we do we do this, I place to play the card, you determine who wins who wins the trick. The trick, if somebody played a wizard, again if you play the jester, you're just you're just out. If somebody played a wizard, then the first wizard that was played wins the trick. The player that plays the first wizard. Meaning if there are multiple ones, only the first player wins. So if a player so if wizards were played, the first wizard wins the trick. Other than that, if that is not the case, the highest trump, in this case that would be here, only one player played a trump, if not trumps were played, then the highest leading card. So the winner takes their trick, and again, you can keep you can keep them in small pile next to you so you know how many tricks you want, you can make a note. But again, this is the interesting thing. If I did with a hand of three, bid that I would win two, I need to plan to win two and to make sure that I lose one. This is an interesting twist. I mean, it's such a simple idea, but it really changes gameplay from many other games because there's no such a thing as a good or a bad luck. Now, when we talk as a good or a bad hand, now, scoring. If you make your bid exactly, you get to uh, score 20 points. That's just for, for me matching your bid plus a number of points equal to the tricks that you want. So if I want, I said I would win two tricks and I do win two tricks, I make 20 points for making my bids plus 10 and 10 for the two tricks. If I said four and I do win four, I'm gonna score 60, 20 for making my bid and 40 for the four tricks. Um, if you do not make your bid, you lose 10 points for each number that you're off. I set four, I win two, then I'm off by two and I lose 20 points. I don't know when it's like, when it's like, why it's like 10, 10, 20, 100, maybe I'm missing something. Because they're all multiples of 10, so you could just divide it by 10. You could do like one, two, three points. Maybe it's less cool, like, oh, I score 2,000 points. Maybe that's the idea. Um, but I like things to be simple. That small thing, uh, that zero at the end. Uh, this is the idea. It's incredibly simple and I like it. I think it's a really good game. Uh, it reduces the lack factor. No, it is true. If I have a hand which is terrible and I think I'm going to score zero, that means, and I say zero, I bid zero, that means that in my best case scenario, if I do make my bid, I'm going to score 20 points. The 20 points for making my bid and I score zero tricks, so I don't have any points for that. If I think I'm gonna make five, and I do make five, then I get seven. So if your hand is bad, it's true, you have fewer chances of, well, you have no chances of making more than a certain number of points. But in other games, you know, if you have a good hand, you make points, and if you have a bad hand, you make no points. Here, the point is that you may have an excellent hand with a lot of cards that will let you win a lot of tricks and lose points, and when you have a bad hand, you may still score some. Again, the range will be small, the range of points that you can score if you're if you're bidding low. And so that's the thing that you do, you have to do. But again, with a, the idea between in other games with a bad hand, you get nothing, here you get 20 points. Hey, that's that's pretty good. If I win with two bids, I get 40. That's not bad at all. So this is the classic edition and I like it very much. It's simple, it's clean, it's intuitive. I played it with adults. I played it with my seven-year-old daughter, Amelia, and she really enjoys the game. She could get it, no problem whatsoever. Um, and the fact that you're playing to lose, and what, this trick I'm playing to win, next trick I'm playing to lose, 
oh shoot, I wanted to lose this one and I won it, so I need to be extra careful that I suck next turn. Oh, you played a wizard, then I'm gonna dump my best cards now because you're gonna win the trick anyways. I'm gonna dump my wizard because you played the first, I'm gonna lose. Otherwise, this annoying wizard that will make me win is gonna make me miss my bet. Interesting dynamics and mechanics on such a simple, I would say, universally known idea as, as that a trick taking is. Here we have a spin that makes the game uh, different. It's still entirely family friendly, but it adds a different dimension, and I really, really like that. I think it's a great family game, it's a great travel game. This is pretty much all that you need. Again, the and it also scales well with different number of players. So the only thing is, well, that you cannot play it with fewer than three players. And you know, many of us like to have the two-player option. Sometimes only my daughter Amelia with seven is around and willing to play games. The little one, the five-year-old is doing who knows what she's doing. Mom is at work. Then we cannot play it. And you know, sometimes you know, also in your family, you may need to play with your spouse. It's only you and your spouse, you and your significant other. What you're gonna do? Which, who are you gonna call? Call the two-player wizard card game, which is not the same game with a smaller deck. Well, the deck is smaller. It's a fairly different game. I'd say the main engine is very similar. Again, we have a sheet of rules, so this time all in English, but it's pretty much the same the same length and the general concepts are the same we have a smaller deck again uh, with numerical cards the four traditional suits wizards and jesters where are the jesters where are they hiding oh man jesters here you go maybe you're ashamed that you always lose there is also a special card the eight of spades which is a special effect and it's it's good to have a reminder on the card itself this trick doesn't count towards bits, so when somebody plays this card uh, and if somebody wins that trick, too bad for them. This card negates negates that trick. The trick in which this is played is played as normal, so that also determines who goes first next time, but that does not count for bits, which again can be great. It's, uh, it's, like, a, it's like a zero thing. What is the main difference? Uh, there, here, you, there are 30... I don't remember how many. You'll do the math. I think 36, because at the beginning of each round, you shuffle all the cards, then you take three there, and you flip the first one face up, and that determines the trump. The other two you don't look at. This way you cannot count cards. You do not know exactly which cards are going to be. You get a sense, but there is always a possibility that a card you're expecting is there, and will be out of play for this round. Then each player gets 11 cards, which will leave 11, so that's 36 total, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what else? Uh, 11, exactly 11, perfect, just 11, look at that, scientific. So each player gets a deck of, a, a hand, a mini deck of 11 cards, and then we have 11 that are left, which are the dummy, the dummy player, and we turn three cards face up from the deck of the dummy player and those cards are available. Basically the idea is that a player will play as normal leading, yeah, you can, the first card leads and that a player has to follow. So well, first you bid and determine how many tricks you think you will win. Then you uh, bid, then you bid, then a player plays, plays, um, the other players have to follow suit if they can, or play the trump if they can, or play a wizard that will always make them lose. We win, win, win. The first wizard wins. So the just always makes them lose. Is the same scoring idea. The big difference is that the dummy always plays second. That is, the the first player plays a card, then selects a card for the dummy and the dummy will play that card, which is then replenished, and the other player gets to play a card from their hand. So the idea is that there is a little more flexibility here. It's good to go first because depending on what the, the dummy player has available, you have a little more chances of winning if, uh, if the dummy plays a bad card, then, uh, well, you're not gonna lose the trick to the dummy. Or there are even better 
chances of losing. Really, I'm afraid that I'm gonna I'm gonna win this track because I was left with some super super good cards like the eight of the Trump suit. Oh, but the dummy plays the wizard. That was the first player, the first dummy to be played, and the opponent plays a card and now the dummy won. So the dummy can win. It's just that when the dummy wins, does the dummy does not score does not score any points. So this is the simple idea. The dummy always plays second. The first player chooses their own card and a card from the dummy and the second player gets to play another card. Record how many tricks were won. See if uh, at the end of the round you met, uh, you made your bid and the first player to score 100 points or whatever other total you have agreed on is the winner of the game. And this is the two player version. Again, it plays different, and the idea of the dummy, uh, it's fun, it's fun, I wasn't sure about it. Uh, somehow it doesn't seem to be over powerful, there are cases in which the dummy just like, yeah, doesn't do much, doesn't really change the balance of things. I was afraid that for the first player having the chance of playing two cards would be too strong, but also there were cases where I really wanted to lose, and all the cards of the dummy were so good, and I was like, darn, uh, the dummy is going to make me... Uh, sorry, I don't know what I was talking about. I'm getting distracted. I wanted to win and the dummy had excellent cards so it would make me lose. I wanted to lose and, and the dummy has terrible cards and would not and would lose more than me. So the dummy sometimes helps you, sometimes doesn't. Going first gives you an edge but not a game-breaking advantage. So it's a fun version. Uh, again, plays quite differently, and sometimes maybe you want to play just for the different uh, strategy that comes from choosing cards from that available area. Maybe that's you just played for for the fun of it. Again, it's not just you're playing the same game. You're playing a game which is close enough that if you like the traditional classic wizard, you're likely to like this one, but also different, so it doesn't feel redundant. Finally, just in case no one is around and you still really want to play wizard, then there is an app that you can buy in the app store, it looks like this, the icon, looks like that. And at the beginning of each round you're given your cards, you look at them, you decide how many bids you're gonna try, you're gonna make, well, how many tricks you're gonna bid on. It's not a bad hand. Um, that's the trump. I don't know, say that I'm gonna, I'm gonna do I'm gonna win, uh, I'm gonna win that number that I pressed and now it's time for me to go and uh, well I'll choose one and then I'll play it. I really want to win that one so I'll play the wizard. Oh no that was wizard was played, I didn't look at it. I just wasted the wizard, great! This is gonna be one of the rounds that I was hoping to lose. Uh, Hoping I can lose it. No, I don't have any hearts, so I cannot play it. I also do not have any any clubs. And then I play this one. And here we go, and that's how it works. That's how that's how the app works. It's pretty faithful, really faithful to the to the classic wizard game. So, Wizard is a fun, simple game. Good for families, good for casual players. Now you're gonna have a lot of options to play the game. Um, give it a try, really. It's a fun game. If you like card games, but sometimes you're annoyed by luck, the simple idea that here you may score points by losing tricks, by bidding low, it's a game changer, quite literally, no pun intended, because it's just a game that is fun and has luck involved, but it also has strategy and ways to mitigate luck, and that thing, you know, makes it a quite pleasant game. Wizard the card game, Classic, two-player, app, all good versions, different but pretty good and pretty fun.